Miss Abby, may I have a moment now? Oh, Miss Dorothy, hello. Anything wrong? I'm having a birthday party for Dave this Sunday. Of course you'll come, right? It's our Dave's birthday party. I know you'll come. I just wanted to make sure. I'm sorry. I have plans for Sunday. Thanks for inviting, but I won't be able to make it. Plans? What's more important than Dave's birthday party? I'm sorry. I have to go to my husband's parents' house from Friday. I can't go to his birthday party. I'm sorry for declining your invitation. Your husband's parents' house? What kind of unimportant schedule is that? You're putting it before Dave's birthday. Going to my husband's parents' house. I've been planning to visit my husband's parents for quite some time. Actually, my husband's brother is getting married. We don't get a lot of time off, so we're going there to celebrate. We're going to celebrate the wedding this time. What can I say to Dave then? It's his birthday, but his friend doesn't want to come. He will be shocked. He thinks all of his friends will come. I'm sorry, but I can't come on Sunday. We'll celebrate Dave's birthday on another day. I'm sorry again. You say that, Abby. You always don't come when I invite you. Are you avoiding me? No, it's not like that. It's just that the timing isn't good. When you invite, is usually on weekdays. Because we don't have to work, we can live on my husband's income without having to work. Spending holidays with family and weekdays with all my friends. Isn't this normal? If you say it's normal, unlike you, I do work. So even if I'm invited on weekdays, it's hard for me to get together with everyone. I know you're always working hard. I think you should communicate with us a little more. Don't you realize that you're out of place at the preschool? Um, I don't think so. You just don't know it yourself. Everyone says so. We don't get a chance to talk to Abby very often. She's always busy with work, so it's hard to talk to her. I see. I'm sorry about that. That's why I'm asking you out. I'm asking you out of the kindness of my heart, but you always turn me down. I'm sorry. If the schedule matches, I'd like to join you. But I'm not sure if you really mean it. I don't know if that's true. I'm sure everyone wants to get to know each other. Can't you come to the birthday party even if it's just for a little bit? Even if you go to your husband's parents' house, you'll be back on Sunday, right? I'm planning to be back on the evening, but I don't want to bother you too late. Don't worry about that. My husband is away on a business trip, and we'll all get together in the afternoon. We're having dinner at our place anyway. Why don't you and even have dinner here too? I'm sure everyone will be fine. Also, if his friends come, Dave will be happy. I'll discuss it with my husband. My husband has to be up early the next day, so I don't think he can go with us. Oh, that's fine either way. Everyone is with just mom, and it would just be awkward if they came together, right? So maybe your husband would rather not come. Okay, I'll talk to him. I'll make sure to include Abby and the others in the headcount. If you can't come, just call me. I'll let Dave Knight know you're coming too. I got it. I'll do my best to make arrangements. All right then. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you for today. Dave was very happy to see you. No, it was my pleasure. I'm sorry we came in late. Don't worry about it. You helped me clean up the mess. I'm sorry. It must have been tiring for you. No, I'm the one who was late. I didn't help with any of the preparations. Let me at least do that. You really helped me out. I didn't even wash the lunch dishes. I thought it would be hard for me to clean up after everyone left. I'm really glad you helped me. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you very much. It was nice talking with you all. Right? That's why I kept inviting you. Of course. Sorry. By the way, Abby, you're very skillful. To be honest, I thought you're usually so busy with work, so you don't really do any housework. I guess I was wrong. My parents usually take care of even. I do all the housework. It's not that I'm that good at it. Your parents take care of him. Do you live with your parents? Yes, that's right. My husband and I are both busy with work. I live with my parents and ask them to take care of even. I didn't know that. Even doesn't go to preschool by bus, so I didn't even know who picks him up. 
You don't talk much, so I didn't know that. Hmm, I see. You live together. Yes, I do. My mother always picks him up from the bus stop, and until I come home, he hangs out with her. I see. So it must be hard for your husband. Hard? Living with his wife's parents. It's like living with someone not close to him. I thought it might be uncomfortable and hard for him. That was my concern too at first. My husband and father are very close. They even take Evan with them on holidays, and the three of them go out to play together. So it wasn't something to worry about. Well, that's great. It's nice that your husband isn't cramped. But I wonder what your husband's parents think. I can't imagine their son being with other parents more than them. My husband's parents are far away, so we don't get to see them very often. Even if I did go to see them, like this time, I have to make time to go see them. Besides, my husband's brother is going to live with his parents. They've told us to do what we want to do. Hmm. Well, I guess you got a convenient husband. No, not exactly. But I'm sure he was concerned at first too. I didn't choose him because he was convenient. Oh yeah. I'd like to ask you a favor. A favor? After seeing how well you did the housework today, I came up with a good idea. What good idea? Abby, will you be my housekeeper? What? You said you were working. It's not a big job anyway, right? It's the kind of work a woman can do. That's not true. It is a good job. Think about it. If you start working as a housekeeper in my house, you don't have to ask your mother to pick your son up from kindergarten, and the hours would be shorter. Two birds with one stone, right? I mean, your current salary is low anyway, right? I'll be willing to double it. My husband makes a lot of money. I'm sorry, but I can't do that. I have my own responsibilities, and I'm not sure that being a housekeeper is. I don't mean to disrespect housekeepers, of course. I just don't think I'm the right person for the job. Why not? A woman's job responsibilities aren't that big of a deal. If you consider about your child, even an idiot can understand which benefits you more. I think it's great that you get to spend more time with Evan. I appreciate you asking, but I'm sorry, I'll have to decline. It's not good. Are you sure? It's not every day you get a chance like this. Yes, it's fine. If you get another chance, please play with Evan. Oh, okay. I'll call you later. Okay, I'll see you later. Hey, Abby. You're off today. It's not a weekday, so you're not working, right? Huh? No, I am not. But, oh, hello, Miss Dorothy. Anyway, you're not working. That means you're free, right? Then why don't you go buy our cake? Dave will wait for you too. What? What's going on all of a sudden? You suddenly asked me to buy a cake. I don't have plans today either. When I was taking a cab home earlier, I saw Abby in front of the station. I assume since you were out this time, you don't have at work today. I thought Evan would be happy to hang out with my son. Isn't that nice? Why don't you come over now? Of course, with cake too. Sorry. My husband and I have plans tonight. I don't have much time. I have to go home now. That's fine. It's only 3 p.m. You still have time before your appointment, don't you? I've been free all day today, so just come over and hang out with us for a little bit. Okay. If you really want to hang out for a bit, I'll be fine. I'll wait for you at home. Bring us something. Okay. Hey, are you sleeping? You're still awake, aren't you? Answer me. What's wrong? At this hour? At this hour? It's not midnight. It's already twelve. I'm usually in bed. But you're still able to reply. If you answer, that means you woke up, right? I woke up to a notification on my phone. What is it? This is insane to call someone at this hour. My common sense still allows me to be up at this hour, so it's not insane. My common sense says this is an insane time. What is this? At this hour, you know, I had drinks with Yuri's mom today. There's no means of transportation, so I called you to pick me up. What? What are you talking about? I'm not your personal driver, or what? What? What are you talking about? You are kind of, aren't you? Huh? Because I'm the boss of the kindergarten, you know. 
All lower class people must be my servant. They're all my housekeepers. Obey the orders of the rich. What are you talking about, Dorothy? You're drunk right now. Then what's the matter with you? Just come get me as soon as you can. That's an order. I refuse. I turn down the housekeeper job too. I'm not going to be your maid. What? You think you can say that? You're the one who said that. How can you say that anyway? You call yourself a boss. You have no right to behave like that. Hmm. You refuse, don't you? I mean, it's crazy that I obey. There's no such thing as hierarchy among kindergarten friends. I'm just saying that I can use a poor working people like you. I can afford to pay and use you. You don't know what's gonna happen if you refuse. I don't know what you're up to. I'm not going to do whatever you tell me to do. If you want to leave, you're on your own. Now, if you'll excuse me, it's late at night. Huh? Wait a minute. Are you listening to me? I told you to come get me, didn't I? You are not ignoring me, right? Hey. Excuse me, Dorothy. Can I talk to you now? Huh? What do you want? I just heard from Evan. Is it true that you're telling Dave to exclude Evan from the group? So what? It's your punishment for disobeying me, right? Drinking alcohol until late at night and telling others to pick you up just because you didn't pick me up, and you drag my kid into this? What are you thinking? So what? Because you disobeyed me, of course. Just because you didn't get your way. You even brought a child into this. Have you got no shame? Is this what adults do? I'm not ashamed. I'm the kind of person who gets rid of people I don't like. No matter who you bring into it. Yes. I just messaged other moms. I told them to stay away from you. Okay, well, I understand. If that's what you want, I'll get the others involved and get rid of you. You started this. I won't forgive you even if you apologize later. What are you talking about? What can you do? You'll find out soon. Well then. What? What do you mean? Hey, I got a call from my husband. I can't believe he was fired from his boss. According to Dorothy, in order to get rid of people you don't like, you don't care who you involve, do you? So I'm going to involve your husband. I'm going to destroy your family. Huh? If he's fired, how are we going to make a living? Didn't your husband tell you about this? The boss of the company he works for is one of the moms at the school. Mom? The boss? I didn't hear anything about that. That's strange. Your husband said he told you. I didn't hear that. Wait, you don't mean the boss? Yes, it's me. I've always been boss of to your husband. Huh? Wait a minute. You're lying, right? I'm not lying. I'm the real boss of Million Corporation. That's why I can get your husband fired. Wait a minute. I didn't know anything about this. Do you think you can get away with that? A grown adult who made a child sad. I told you, didn't I? Even if you apologize later, I won't forgive you. Wait, wait, wait. I'm going to tell everyone right now. I'll take responsibility for correcting it. So? You don't have to do that. You're no longer part of the kindergarten. What? What do you mean? If your husband was fired from his job, you can't even live in your current apartment, right? That's why he's going back to the countryside. Huh? No way. I don't want to do it. Firing him is too much. I just went a little far. A little? Is what you did just a little bit too much? Well, that's... Your husband said, if you know he's going back to countryside, you wouldn't like it. I guess that was true. Of course not. Who would want to go to the countryside like that? Everything is so poor. That's definitely not the place for me. Then why don't you stay there by yourself? If you can pay the rent, that is. What? What are you talking about? Your husband. He's been thinking about divorcing you for a long time. He even put the boss of his own company in trouble. He was convinced that he couldn't work with you any longer. Huh? What? What's that? Why, I never heard of such thing before. Not listening again, huh? Dorothy, you're the kind of person who never listens to others, aren't you? Didn't your husband tell you that many times about your attitude towards other mothers and your son's education? What's that? Your husband told me, Dave has become selfish just like you. He won't listen to anything he say. Both you and Dave. He said that you and Dave make fun of his father and the other people at the kindergarten. 
Even though you've talked about it many times, you're always so full of your opinions. I can't handle it anymore. Oh, but he can't tell me what to do. He hasn't done a very good job of raising his own child. But that's not the case anymore. He's decided to raise his child properly and change his working hours. He is also moving to a new department. What? You said he was fired. Oh, I'm sorry. I lied. When I said he was fired, I thought the first thing you'd be worried about is money. I was testing you to see if that was true. Don't be silly. So my husband wasn't fired? Yes, miss. He's not fired. But it looks like the divorce is real. What? Wait a minute. What about Dave? Is my husband really willing to take him? Yes, he is. He's saying so even beside me right now. Huh? Are you with him? Yes. We're talking in the meeting room. What the? What are you talking about? I'll never agree to this. I talked to your parents earlier. They told me that they'll leave everything to your husband, and they are not going to take you back to my parents' house. They said you can live on your own. Huh? Is that a lie? Why don't my parents take my side? Isn't it because of what you've done? I heard you were terrible at home. They were worried about Dave too. They wondered if he'd be okay being raised by you. Don't be silly. He's my child. It's up to me now how I want to raise him. A child is not an accessory to you. If you're thinking about Dave, I think it would be better for Dave if you don't keep him by your side. There's no way I can agree to that. You have no right to say that to me. That's true too. Then why don't you and your husband discuss the rest? If you were divorcing, I would do my best to support you. You don't stand a chance. Oh no, that can't be. By the way, you were a self-proclaimed boss mom, but no one really adores you. I'd be happy to see you're gone as soon as possible. Goodbye. Hey, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Please. They talked it over and decided to get divorced. I feel a little sorry for Dave, but he's going to live apart from his mom. Her husband also has a brother living nearby. He will receive support from them as well. The company will do its best to support them. Dorothy seems to have been given some money. She has been allowed to live alone, and instead of paying child support for Dave, her husband has allowed her to visit him once a month. There are many things that her husband has not been able to do for Dave. He is still getting used to housework. He said that it takes a lot of time and effort, but he seemed to be very happy. I thought I would continue to support him in the future. Sorry, Emma. That's why I gotta bring Mike. What's that mean? Now you two come back together, living a note like this run off together. I don't understand. You don't need to know it. I said. I don't run off with Mike. Run off with your real sister's fiance? How could you do such a terrible thing? How long have you two been together? We started dating recently. Mike and his friends came to the pub where I work for part time. We were having a drink after my shift, and we hit it off, and we finally together. Huh? Ha ha ha. Well. Now your earnest and successful life is ruined, isn't it? I guess you have to experience a setback at least once in a setback at least once in your life, right? You should be thanking me for giving you the experience of life's peaks and valleys. What did you say? I've always been pissed off with you, Emma. You have been always diligent, and our parents like you. You got into her first choice of high school and college. You even got a job at the big company that our parents were proud of. I'm really pissed off that you got married so smoothly. That's why I wanted to ruin my Emma's life just once. No way. You took my fiance away from me from that reason. Well, to be honest, I didn't think it would go this well. But Mike was even more thrilled than I imagined he would be. It seems he's been dissatisfied with Emma for a while. I pretended to be a little spoiled, and he immediately confessed his feeling to me. Mike said I'm prettier and more attractive than Emma. Mike said he'd rather have a girl like me for a wife. Oh no! Just like this. My parents also told me to get out of my parents' house as soon as possible, 
and become independent. They told me how long I have to work as a freelancer. Besides, it sounds fun like drama, so I ran off together. I will be happy as your part of Mike. Miss Cole, Miss Cole, hey Mike, are you really going to stop marrying me? Are you really run off together with my sister Sally? Yes, Sally. But marrying your fiance's sister, my sister's parents would be against it. So I decided to run off with Emma. After five years of dating, I was so happy when Mike finally proposed to me. So why dump me like this? Are you frustrated with me or something? Well, to be frank, I'm tired of being with you. I think your diligence is your strong point. But when I'm with you, who is perfect in every way, I feel nothing but pressure. Huh? You graduated from a university higher than mine. You work for a big company and make more money than me. On top of that, you are a good at cook and cleaner. And recently, you success to lost weight for a wedding. For a wedding. It's hard for me to be with you, who's perfect in everything. What do you mean it's hard? You told me when you're first dating. You said you like me like that. You said you fell in love with my effort and everything. I was attracted to that at first, but you know, it's just too perfect. I'm exhausted. It's as if you're saying I'm sloppy. Why? At least if you're a bad cook or living in messy room, it would have been better if I could see that kind of sloppiness before we engaged. Wait a minute. I wasn't a good cook either. I hated cleaning. But Mike said you didn't like people who were sloppy. I made an effort to learn how to cook, and I tried to be clean. But now you say I'm too perfect, and I it's gonna be tired. That's terrible. Shut up. You don't know what I'm thinking. I'm less educated than you. I make less money than you. How miserable do you think? Have you been every day, Mike? Unlike you, Sally always come at me. No matter where I take her, she always says, "Wow, I've never been here before." The way she react is adorable. Even when I bought her a drink at a family restaurant, she said, "I'm so happy." Thank you. I'm so happy. I guess guys have a weakness for girls like that. I know. You've been looking for that kind of reaction from me for a long time. A couple should compliment for each other shortcoming, shortcoming. But if one of us is perfect, there's no point in being a couple. We both live hand in hand, helping each other. A perfect woman like you should live alone and miserable for the rest of your life. See you later. Hi Emma, I'm going back to my parents' house from today, so I'm taking your room. What, Sally? I heard that you moved back to our parents' house after we ran off together. So. You're living in the room I used to live in, so I'm going to ask for my room back. I'm sorry, but you need to get out of my parents' house. Wait a minute. Why are you coming back to my parents' house? They were worried about breaking up my engagement with Mike. And now you're coming back to my parents' house? Actually, Mike and I broke up. You broke up? You run out with a big smile on your face, saying Mike would make you happy. Rumor has it that you got married and registered, but it wasn't as happy as I thought it would be. That's why we got divorced. What? Because Mike was even more troublesome as than I had imagined. Every time if I didn't say wow to him, he would get upset, and yet. He wouldn't even treat me a dinner out because we're a couple. I can't take that kind of petty attitude anymore. That's why you got divorced. When you have such a young and pretty wife, you know, normally you'd work harder than ever for me, right? And yet 
even after three years, his salary hasn't changed at all. Even though Mike is a man, he doesn't even reach my sister's salary. So I gave up on Mike and divorced him. So you come back to my parents' house to take it easy. How dare you come back here without any shame? What's so embarrassing about it? It's common for people to come back to their parents' house after a divorce, and yet my room is gone because you took it. It's really impossible. It's your brain that's impossible. I'm not gonna forgive you, and neither are our parents. So please go live alone somewhere. I can't do that. I don't even have money to rent a room. Besides. I learned how easy to live at home when I was married to Mike. It's not easy to cook and clean. That's why I'm definitely going back to my parents' house. You're still a child with no sense of independence. So I sold all of your stuff. I'm gonna use it my allowance. What? Sold? Wait a minute. Sally, where are you now? You're about to go back to your parents' house, right? Huh? I've already arrived at my parents' house. I think it changed the locks on the front door, but the kitchen door was open, so I went in there and I sold your stuff. Oh my God! So please leave alone, Emma. I don't have a room for Emma anymore. I'm sorry that I discard your stuff without telling. Leave alone. What? I can't believe you were in my house without my permission. And whose stuff did you sell off? You are really good for nothing, girl, aren't you? What? You are already living alone? That's strange. I heard your engagement was called off, and you went back to our parents' house in misery. Yes. I went back to my parents' house because they were too worried about me. But soon after that, they decided to sell the house. What? You sold your parents' house? So finally, I live alone now. My mom and dad live in another apartment. Hey, what's that? That's not what I heard. Why are you selling your parents' house? Are you kidding me? I'm giving up my parents' house because of you. What do you mean it's our fault? Rumor of your runoff spread quickly throughout our hometown. It made me and my parents very embarrassed in our hometown. Everywhere we went, people started whispering about us. They offered us some weird water and a vase. Wow, that's what was happening. I just put up with it. Thinking it would stop someday, but on the contrary, more and more strange people kept coming to our house. Dad and I were exhausted. Then my dad decided to retire, so we sold the house. Oh, I see. And that's when I started living alone again. Parents are living in an apartment in nice, relaxing place. Oh wait, wait a minute. So. The stuff I got rid of really wasn't yours. Yes, because we don't live in that house anymore. So, whose stuff did I throw away? It's not Emma's, and the house is sold. Whose luggage is that? I don't know anything about it. My parents' house was sold to a real estate agent. As it is, the real estate agent renting it out as a rental, or. Maybe it was sold as a used property and boat. We don't even know who lives there. Oh no, no, no! So I'm trespassing in a complete stranger's house, and then I sold off someone's stuff without permission. I did something pretty bad, didn't I? Yes, you did something that usually a police matter. So I called. So I called the police. I'm sure the realtor and the police will be arriving shortly, so you'll have to atone for your sins. Oh no! You lied to me when you said you called the police. You sold me out to the police. 
I'm not gonna let a crime go unpunished. So bye for now. Hi Emma. How have you been? Oh hi. I'm fine. But you seem to be having a hard time. I heard from Sally that you got divorced. Yeah, I'm so relieved to finally be divorced. My marriage to Sally was a disaster. I wonder why I married her. What? At first, I liked her when she couldn't do without me. But Sally stated the same. She dead care of the house. She depends on me for everything. I'm tired of being married like that. But that's the marriage you want. You don't want me to do everything perfectly, do you? You choose to run off because you wanted the opposite. I finally figured it out. I was just jealous of everyone who was better than me. But in my mind, I've always loved only you. So please, Emma, will you marry me? What? Sorry for hurting you three years ago. I know it made you sad to run off with your real sister. But I will definitely make you happy from now on. I will become a man who is not ashamed to stand next to you. I won't say that I'm too perfect or that I'm too tired. So please marry me. Sorry, but I will marry tomorrow. What? A wedding? Is that supposed to be the bride's wedding? Yeah, I met a great guy and we're getting married. He's someone who respects me for working hard and striving for perfection. He said he wants to work with me like that to build each other up. No, don't be fooled by a man like that. He would have disappeared from your life anyway, just like I did in past. If you're going to marry him, do it with me. Thank you for your concern, but I'm fine. The Groos man has the same education as me. He works for the same company. What? He doesn't seem to feel any pressure for me. In fact. When I told him when I broke up with you, he even laughed so hard. Is this the least bit of pressure? He said, "You're a very sensitive ex-boyfriend." What? He said that if I made a lot more money than him, he said he wouldn't be ugly jealous, and that it would motivate me. He said it would be blessing to have someone better than me around. I'm getting married tomorrow to someone like that. Wait a minute, Emma. I'm finally realizing that. So why don't you come back to me? I politely declined. Well, I have final preparation for the wedding tomorrow. Take care, Mike. What should I do, Emma? I've been charged almost two million dollars by the real estate agency. He says they'll take me to the police without any question. Oh, they haven't caught you yet. They are such a sweet real estate agent. They are not nice at all because two million dollars. There's no way I have that kind of money. But for selling it up without permission and trespassing, you're lucky you got away with that much. Listen, I was wondering if you could help me. You are still works for a big company, right? You must have some saving, right? I do, but. I don't owe you anything. Then, at least tell me where our parents are. I've been trying to reach them since yesterday, but I can't get through. I want to go back to our parents' house as soon as meet with parents again. But you wanted to get out of our parents' house so badly that you ran off together, didn't you? You hated your parents for nagging you so much, and now you want to live with them again. It's your fault that you want to get out of our parents' house in the first place. Well, that's well. I'll check with my parents just to make sure. They said they never want to see you again. That's what the neighbors' fathers and mother both said. Next door? Oh, you're with them now? Yes, because today is my wedding day. Both mom and dad are here to congratulate me on my daughter's wedding. Oh what, Emma, you're getting married. Thanks to you taking Mike away from me, I met a very nice man. I'm grateful to you for that, but I can't forgive you for stealing him from me. Well then, take care. If you don't have money, go to the police and pay for your sins. 
after that. Sally bowed down to consumer finance companies here and there. She managed to come up with a settlement of two million yen. Sally is now working in the night business to repay the debt, but according to rumors, she has a very bad attitude toward customer service because of stress from the job. She refreshed doing gambling. This is said to have caused her debts to increase even more. And my ex-fiance Mike has returned to her. His parents said, "You disgrace! Don't ever show your face again." And he was kicked out. He is now working as a living worker at the nearby factory. Can I hear that he is desperately looking for a marriage on his days off? However, he refused women who earn less than me. And I hear that he is constantly complaining that he can find a woman who can cook better than me. He says that he has had not success at all.